The Liebherr HS855HD has an operating weight of around 90 tonnes and when configured as a crane it can lift 90 tonnes. It's a duty cycle machine but we'll see more of that later and this model is in the colours of Ballas Nedum, the Dutch company. It comes in a typical Liebherr branded box and as usual there's no information about the real machine. When you open up the box there's the usual expanded polystyrene trays and there's some instruction sheets. And they're quite good with one of them covering the reeving of the A-frame. And the other instruction sheet includes more general information about the assembly of the model. It's written in German and in English, and it's got step-by-step -step drawings and text. And really, the only thing that's missing that would have been helpful is a parts list. On with opening up the trays, and they are factory sealed. The top tray has essentially got the boom sections and counterweight pieces. And the crane body and the rest of the small parts are contained in the lower tray. One thing that's good to see is that the crane itself is wrapped in soft paper to protect the paintwork. And that's not the only protective packaging on it either. There's wrapping on the crawler tracks and there's also an elastic band to keep the track links together during shipping. And there are also other bits and pieces of packaging that you need to carefully remove in order to begin the assembly of the model. For the assembly we'll build the model up in crane mode and the first thing to do is to undo the thread that's been tied onto the boom. And then we'll jump to the other end and get on with reeving up the A-frame which controls the movement of the boom. You access the boom winch by opening up the door and you use a special tool to put it on the end of the winch and then you can turn it using the tool. It has got a spring-loaded brake so you push in to release that. Once you've pulled out enough thread it's a matter of then just following the diagram and it's a reasonably straightforward piece of reeving. But as always it takes a bit of patience and can be frustrating and I promise I haven't been drinking when I'm trying to do this. Sometimes it's just too hard to get something in a hole. Once you've been up and down enough times, the last thing to do is to put the thread through the tying off point. And if you're very, very good, you can get the thread through the eye in a one shot. Wow, I am good. One tip if you ever need to secure a tying off point is just to put a tiny little bit of glue onto the knot. And it just gives a little bit more confidence, particularly if something's going to be heavily loaded. The last thing to do is to snip off the loose end. And here's the model with the A-frame set up in transport mode, but there wasn't enough thread on the drum to fully lower the A-frame on the review model. Moving on to building up the boom, and it's made of a number of pieces which you can just push together. And when the connection eyes are lined up, you use tiny brass nuts and bolts to make the connections. These are very, very small pieces, but they do give you a feeling of modelling precision. The brass nuts are incredibly small, and you use a special tool to fit them, so you can drop the nut into the end of the special tool. And then you can offer it up to the end of the little bolt. And you use another tool to do the tightening. And the whole arrangement works really well to get a good tight connection. The boom head can be configured for either crane or dragline use. And we're building up the crane here. There's a small auxiliary jib which gets secured on the axle rod that holds the main pulleys for the crane. And so there's a little bit of a fiddly operation where you need to feed the pulleys onto the axle rod as you gently ease it through. And then when it's all the way through onto the other end, you apply a little plastic cap, which you then push into place and that secures it all. The counterweight is a nice piece of modelling. It's all made up of separate parts and the little ballast stones are all stacked together, but they're a little bit of a loose stacking arrangement. So you get these special hairpin clips, which you use to secure them together. So here we put a full stack in and then you just feed the clip in. And after a bit of jiggling about, they're all joined together and you can push the whole arrangement into the base plate. The parts are made like this because the real crane can lift up and attach its own counterweight. We'll simulate that using fat fingers and then just offer it up onto the end of the crane and once the holes line up at the bottom you can then see that a pin can be inserted which then secures the ballast in place. The lifting cylinder and chains which form part of the self-raising mechanism are modelled and you can attach those by pushing the cylinder in at the back of the crane. 
And if you want it very realistic, you can attach the bottom of the chains onto clips on the counterweight. Onward ever onward, and it's time to assemble the boom pendants. And these are very nice parts consisting of wire and tiny connectors. To join them up, it's unfortunately fat fingers time again, so you put the little connector through the loop on one end of a pendant. And then you can put the end of the other pendant into the end of the connector, and you can see there's a hole there, so you can join the two up by inserting one of the very small bolts. Again, don't try this if you've had too much to drink, but once you've got the bolt in, you can use the tools and make a solid connection with a nut on the end, and it's a really nice, good connection. Once you've got all the pendants joined up, you can then see you've got the makings of a very realistic crane. The last job to do is to fix the hook, so we begin by spooling out some thread. And then there's just some simple reeving of the large hook block, and also of the small hook. And once again the thread goes straight through the eye of the hook in a one shot. Brilliant. It then just needs a little bit of cosmetics to tie up the loose ends after having tied the knots. And then you're ready to raise your boom. As you raise the boom there is one thing you have to remember to do and that's to insert the boom stops together. And then you use the key and wind up the boom. With the boom up that completes the assembly of the model in the crane mode. And although it takes a little bit of effort to put it all together you do end up with a realistic and impressive looking model. The HS855 is a duty cycle crawler crane, and that means it's designed for high performance applications where there are repeated cyclical loads put on the machine. The machine shown here is equipped with diaphragm walling equipment, and it's being used to excavate the side walls of an underground station in London. The activity is very repetitive as it digs out part of the diaphragm wall, and then discharges the soil into the waiting dump truck. So in this case the crane performs repeated load cycles with very little idle time. And not only that, the operation is particularly demanding on this site because the excavation of the diaphragm walls is being carried out 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The metal tracks and track frames are very detailed and the Liebherr name is embossed on the drive sprocket. The cab detailing is very good with nice tinted windows and the controls inside look convincing. And the casting details on the side of the body are very good with sharp graphics and good paintwork. At the rear the detailing of the counterweight self raising mechanism is also very good. And there's a plastic ladder on the side and hydraulic hoses coming out of the body on the front. Looking from above, the detail on the roof is also convincing with some non-slip surfaces. And the detailing of the boom and pendant connections shows off the high quality model engineering. The pulleys in the boom top and the hook blocks are all metal and nicely made parts. And if you assemble the crane in dragline configuration, there's a neat fair lead. And the dragline bucket is really excellent with its detailing and tiny perforations. Moving out onto the test surface and we can try out the crawler tracks which can be rolled quite nicely by a hand, they're a little bit stiff. But the track frames do have working rollers on the bottom which is a nice feature. But if we try the tracks out on a smooth surface then there's a bit too much friction for them to roll. But if we swiftly slide in a rough surface then things are rather better and the tracks can be made to roll. There are some other neat features on the crawler tracks, they are in fact completely removable if you undo screws but not only that. They are also extendable, so you can extend the width of the crawler tracks for stability when the crane is working. But for transport on a suitable low loader, you need to narrow up the width of the machine, and that's when the extendable tracks would be closed up. Another feature is the tilting cab, which goes to a good angle and can hold the pose. And a neat touch is the exhaust stack, which can be lowered for transport or raised up for service. As you would expect, you can rotate the crane, although it's really quite stiff on the review model. But better that than something that's way too loose and is rocking all over the place. Of course if you want to play crane driver you can, you can open the side door and put the tool in and then you can lower either of the two winches just by turning the tool on the relevant winch. Both winches have spring loaded brakes that work very well. 
As an alternative configuration, the crane can also be rigged as a drag line, and assembling the drag line will be covered in a future video. But suffice to say that by operating the winches correctly, you can get a realistic drag line operation. In summary, this is a very nice crawler crane model by NZG. The model engineering is particularly fine with all the feeling of something that's precision made, and the fact that it can be configured as a crane or as a drag line gives flexibility. It also looks very attractive in the colours of Ballast Nedum. It's an outstanding crawler crane model.